Cobra Commander has a mystical hypnotist in his ranks, a guy who helps him manipulate the G.I. Joe team and who can tell Cobra what their enemies are thinking. Let's talk about the ultimate peg warmer. Let's talk about Crystal Ball. Before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe because I do upload videos just like this every single week. All right, let's jump into our story. It's said that Crystal Ball was born to international parents. His father was a Romanian, presumably gypsy, who had sight beyond sight. No, wait, that's Thundercats. His father had second sight. Also, it's worth noting that his file card actually says Romalian, not Romanian. The only other times I've heard of Romalian is when David and Patrick Bateman were fighting over business card fonts in the movie American Psycho. Crystal's mother was an American lady hailing from Bangor, Maine. It's said that Crystal Ball was the seventh son of a seventh son, and because of this, as Gypsy Legend foretells, this gives him supernatural powers. If this all sounds out of left field for the G.I. Joe franchise, and if Bangor, Maine sounds familiar, there's a reason for this. Crystal Ball was created by the legendary horror author Stephen King and his son Owen King. Owen was a big fan of the G.I. Joes, and so they created this new character which Hasbro ended up using. King's other son, Joe, is a rather famous horror novelist and horror comic book writer in his own right, even getting his own imprint line at DC Comics. Owen's name was also used by Hasbro when they made the character Sneak Peek. Depending on who you ask, whether it's Steven or Owen, each will tell you that it's the other who had the larger hand in Crystal Ball's making. What happened was that before he was Crystal Ball, he was a character named Trance Master, and not because he likes EDM. Other names for him playing on his hypnotic abilities as well were the Gazer, Mesmeron, and Professor Id. But Trance Master was going to have once been an encyclopedia salesman from Maine before he went abroad to study hypnotism. And in a remote mountain village, he was taken in by evil occult priests who taught him the mystic arts of mind control and hypnotism. And it was then that he surfaced. A Cobra operative, according to a trading card released in 1991, Crystal Ball was born in Cobra Law. The mystical city that gave rise to Galobulus, Pythona, and Nemesis Enforcer. Perhaps the remote village that Transmaster went to was Cobra Law. Anyways, this was rejected, and so Hasbro went to the King family to write the backstory. His Brazilian file card says that Crystal Ball worked for a circus, using divination and numbers on his audience, which failed, and so an old gypsy gave him his hypnotic powers to help. And that gypsy just happened to be a Cobra agent, and that's how, as Estrella details, Crystal became a cobra himself. The concept art design for Crystal Ball is, as you can see from his face, inspired by Vincent Price. The actor from House of Wax, Edgar Allan Poe's The Pit and the Pendulum, as well as The Mask of the Red Death. Price was Egghead in 66's Batman and Frederick in House at Haunted Hill. A redesign and one continuity changed his look to more of an Alan Moore look, a guy who's known to be an occultist and anarchist and who wrote works like V for Vendetta, From Hell, Batman the Killing Joke, and Swamp Thing. It's all of this horrific inspiration that earned him this spot as Halloween 2020's feature. In one interview, Stephen King was actually surprised when Owen looked up Crystal Ball and learned that people really didn't like the character. Before he knew out the fandom's distaste for him, Stephen King name-dropped Crystal Ball in his horror novel, Tommyknockers. There's also a connection to another prolific horror writer, the creator of Goosebumps and Fear Street, R.L. Stein. R.L.'s brother Bill and Bill's wife Megan are also writers in their own right. They wrote a short story for fall of 1987's edition of G.I. Joe magazine called Peril in Paris. In the short story, Falcon, Psychout, Gung-Ho, and Jinx were in Paris trying to save a busload of hostages from Cobra. When they were suddenly released, one hostage named Peter Haskell mentioned that Crystal Ball had interrogated all 14 hostages and possibly brainwashed them too. Psychout ended up finding Crystal Ball and Cobra Commander in a secret area under a floor of a warehouse where the hostages were taken after they were unloaded from the bus. Only you could find me, Crystal Ball said to Psychout, asking him if he sensed his aura, but Psychout quipped, That's not what I sensed. Have you considered changing your mouthwash? So Psychout radioed Falcon to come, and while he waited, he and Crystal Ball had a staring contest. Turns out that that Peter Haskell hostage had been brainwashed to assassinate a Soviet leader, but Jinx put a stop to it. And then Gung Ho started squirting everyone and laughing as he even squirted himself in the face too. Hovik Delakian was tapped for the art to accompany the story, depicting Crystal Ball in the retro sci-fi style he's known for. Crystal Ball first appeared in the G.I. Joe comic book continuity with the 24th issue of G.I. Joe Special Missions, which, it's important to note, was not written by Larry Hama, but was written by Herb Trimpey and penciler Dave Cockrum. This issue found the G.I. Joe team at a baseball game at Flushing Stadium in New York to protect the U.S. president. 
Crystal ended up hypnotizing Falcon and Hawk and, while looking like a devious Doctor Strange, said, When Crystal Ball zaps them, they stay zapped. Conveniently, CoverGirl happened to have hypnotherapy training, so she was able to quote-unquote snap them out of their stupor. He wouldn't show up again until many years later with Larry Hama's G.I. Joe A Real American Hero issue 167, and he actually made the cover along with Firefly. Here we find Crystal Ball running a psychic, fortune-telling business in a strip mall somewhere in southern United States. He was using his skills on a paying customer when Firefly showed up and drove her out the front door. Meanwhile, the G.I. Joe team were up above the Arctic Circle at the ice station where they first ran into Quinn many years ago. Cobra Wolves were being taken out and they realized that it was General Joe Colton and his SDI laser which was located in a secret station atop New York City's Chrysler building. So it became up to Firefly, the saboteur, and Crystal Ball, the hypnotist, to penetrate the building's defenses and take out the laser. They planned to use Crystal's hypnotism and future telling along with a squad of night creepers for the job. So, they started in the sewers at the base of the structure. Crystal Ball sensed klaxons and sirens in their future, so Firefly looked around and spotted a security camera and said, You're proving useful already, told them as they waded through the sewer water. They ended up breaking in through a hatch in a sub-basement and headed up the giant stairwell. And they made it up and Crystal Ball was completely out of breath, wheezing and gasping for air. They made it to an ad agency, which was actually a front. And it was manned by security, military, and intelligence personnel. And the agency also had the one access point to the laser center upstairs. Crystal Ball had to hypnotize everyone in the room. He didn't know there would be that many people. And he told Firefly that it may strain the limits of his hypno shield. So Firefly said, no, no worries. Anyone that you can't put under gets a 9mm double tap to the head. So he walked by their computer stations. And to the staff, Firefly and Crystal looked like Joe and Jane. Two helicopters full of those night creepers that were supposed to help them were just outside the window, but Destro buzzed them in his jet and scared them off, and suddenly Firefly and Crystal were on their own, and they had to fight their way out. Firefly held everyone in the ad agency at gunpoint while Crystal whipped out his shield. They had all the staff surround them as human shields, and they made their way for the elevators. And at the elevator, that's when they ran into Joe and Jane and Mainframe. Firefly shot Joe and Jane started firing back and shocked Crystal asked Firefly if he had killed all of them and disappointed Firefly said not hardly. They ran back to the stairway to make their descent and that's when they ran into Jane on a landing. Furious about Joe being shot she held them there at the tip of her weapon but Firefly told her he was holding a remote detonator in his hand. Anyways despite that Jane managed to take down Firefly and Crystal tried to hypnotize her. But she said, shut that thing off, you pathetic loser, as she picked up a weapon and aimed it right at his face. He showed up again in issue 219 in the Dreadnoughts New Jersey Pine Barrens headquarters where he was with Zartan and the Dreadnoughts along with Big Boa, Cesspool, and Slice and Dice. Zartan had pulled them all together and come up with a plan to counter Cobra Commander who'd now cozied up to Black Major and Revanche Robotics instead of them. Basically left them out in the cold and they were mad. They then moved to Karab, Cobra Anagram, Karab Tree Office Park, where Crystal was giving the group a magic trick demonstration with his shield. Zartan scoffed at this, but he said he was trying to render the veil that obscures the mysteries of time and space to see what happened and conjure a ghost that will tell him what will happen. But it worked, and Zartan got a look at Cobra Commander. Mindbender and a revanche cyborg, as Crystal yelled that the brainwave scanner would be a key to their new plot. Crystal then helped the group get a convoy past a security gate so they could take over Springfield. Crystal went to the local news station and put his hypno shield on the TV broadcast to entrance the entire town. He then showed up again a few issues later. Now, his fortune telling business was in a strip mall in New Jersey and that same client found him. Well, it wasn't really. It was actually Zartan in disguise. Zartan said he needed help with what was happening in Springfield. And then as forces gathered for the current snake hunt event in the fall of 2020, Crystal strolled into the dewdrop in Elizabeth, New Jersey, flanked by Zartan where the dreadnoughts were still hanging out. Because Crystal was in Springfield, he got wind of Cobra's plan to kidnap Throwdown Snake Guys and put him in the brainwave scanner to turn him into a Cobra asset. Zartan said they should help because, as they were now on the outs with Cobra Commander, the world's deadliest ninja, if he was turned, might be used against them. Crystal infiltrated Springfield again, disguised as a pizza delivery guy in a scooter. He hypnotized a couple Cobra to tell him that Snake Eyes was in the rec center. He then told them that they'd awaken with no memories of their conversation, but they'd be hungry for pizza since he still had deliveries to make. He also discovered a revanche-like October Guard in town and reported back to Zartan, who was still at the dewdrop. Scooting around town, he was able to confirm again Snake Eyes' location in the Springfield rec center 
just based on the number of his tanks and vipers posted outside of it. When a G.I. Joe team landed on the roof of the rec center, a couple vipers spotted them. Luckily, the October Guard were there to take some down, while Crystal hypnotized the rest into forgetting what they saw. Shrage said, who is this idiot? I want to shoot him. But Colonel Brekov said, hey, Crystal has a point and we can always kill him later. So Crystal and the October Guard told the Joes that they'd hold off Cobra at the front door of the community center while they rescued their friend. And that's where we leave our friend Crystal in the fall of 2020, front and center in G.I. Joe stories, although it took him forever to find his place, which is ironic for someone with mystic vision. In the Devil's Due continuity, Crystal Ball was working with General Ray, now calling himself Dr. Stevens, although his plot around Ray Serpentor failed and the G.I. Joe team arrested Crystal Ball. Oh, and in pre-Hama IDW continuity, Crystal Ball has a son named Max, so I guess he's Max Ball, maybe? Because of the timing of his release, Crystal Ball never showed up in the Sunbow animated series. His first action figure released in 1987, and he came with a reflecting light pulse modulator styled as his hypno shield. Yep, no gun other than the one he had molded to his thigh, so I guess he has to hypnotize his enemies to sleep on the battlefield instead of sending them for a dirt nap. That same year, Crystal Ball was in the TV commercial for the Buzzbore vehicle, another winner. He also happened to make it to the box art for the Cobra Jetpack. Seems like a random pairing, other than them sharing a release year. In the 1987 G.I. Joe catalog though, Zorana is flying the jetpack, while Crystal Ball is seen inside the Pogo Ballistic Battle Ball. Hmm, another winner. That's like a theme here. Crystal Ball managed to make it onto some merchandise in 87, like a poster included in the spring 87's G.I. Joe magazine. He was also front and center for a file folder that a company named Imaginings 3 produced as the Defiant launched and he fought G.I. Joe with his friends Raptor and Big Boa. There was a FSS crystal ball figure for Wave 7 which finally gave him a firearm that he could hold and a knife go with his lenticular shield. So as you can see, despite not necessarily being the most popular G.I. Joe franchise character, crystal ball continues to be used across media, even if it's a, in a tongue-in-cheek way. And so he surely has a place in the brand moving forward. And where will that be? Not sure right now, but we'll be there when we find out. Until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.